welcome back to Corrosion Coach. We're gonna talk about reference electrodes today. Why reference electrodes? Well, when we take pipe to soil potentials, which is the way we prove whether we're achieving cathodic protection or not, we must have some type of reference. So we may take a pipe to soil, but on that soil side, we've got a reference cell or a reference electrode hanging on the other end of that meter. It'll be on the black side or common or negative side of that meter. So we're always gonna take a pipe to soil with a reference electrode on the other side. I wish there was one reference electrode. There's not. There's actually multiple reference electrodes. Now the one you see at the top, that's the one we use probably the most out there. Most of you watching this video, if you're in the field on land, that's probably what you're using. A copper copper sulfate reference electrode. CSE, copper sulfate electrode. Very commonly used on land. However, we can't use them in certain applications. One of the examples of that would be in seawater. That high chloride content can penetrate uh, the tip, that porous tip of our electrode, and it can contaminate it, and it can make your readings get off and inaccurate. That's no good, so we can't use it for that, but we can use it on land. But if we are in an environment that uh, we must take a pipe to soil or a structure to soil and that soil happens to be salt water we can use a silver silver chloride reference electrode which is that second bullet point you see there you might hear about the calomel and certainly that hydrogen there i'm going to get my laser pointer for you so i can kind of keep you on track these two guys in the middle i don't want to say they're not used they definitely are but they're not really you well they're not they're not used in the field you may see them used in a lab setting so uh, i've got a buddy of mine down at texas a m they've got a lab they're running all kinds of tests so they want a very very stable reference electrode that can give them very accurate readings they'll do that and they'll use calomel for example so that those two reference cells you see there would be utilized in a lab setting not out in the field now zinc, which is just zinc, is just the metal. Um, zinc can be used out in the wild. I've actually used one inside production tanks, down that thief hatch, where I can't use a copper sulfate reference electrode because it'll contaminate it. That environment will actually contaminate my silver chloride as well, or silver silver chloride. And so I use zinc. So that can be a very good tool to use in certain environments. It does have some limitations, certainly with high temperature, but it can be used out in the field. The other two that you see down there, they are reference electrodes. They're not commonly used, but they do exist. So I wanted to at least tell you about them. Okay, fine. Well, let's talk about how to convert these things, or at least let's talk about the difference in voltage between them. So what we're doing on this particular chart is, is we're using copper sulfate as our zero. So think of it as being on the black lead of your multimeter or your voltmeter. So we're gonna compare everything else to the copper copper sulfate. We're just comparing two different reference electrodes to each other on this particular chart. And so we got copper sulfate at the top. He's our zero, that's why he's zero. But as you work down this list, you have various reference electrodes and the voltage difference between them. So that second one, silver silver chloride, when you test silver silver chloride with respect to copper copper sulfate, the silver silver chloride is gonna be more negative than copper copper sulfate by 60 millivolts. That's what this chart is telling you. As you work down, calomel, calomel, that standard calomel electrode is gonna be more negative with respect to copper sulfate by 72 millivolts. And then we go to hydrogen, he's also more negative than copper copper sulfate by 316 millivolts. And then finally we have pure zinc, he's also gonna be more negative than copper copper sulfate by 1116 millivolts. So that's what this chart is showing you as uh, with respect to copper copper sulfate, he's our zero. And then the typical uses over there, we kind of went over that already, uh, that copper sulfate reference electrode, he's in the field, same with silver silver chloride, the two in the middle, calomel and hydrogen, those guys are gonna be for lab settings only. And then finally we can use zinc in the field as well. Okay, so this is where it gets fun. 
So this is very similar to the table I just showed you. We're gonna call this our conversion chart and the bullet points is what this stands for over here. So for example, CSE is copper sulfate electrode. So you can pause this screen if you wanna to try to memorize that, uh, but that's what that means. The SSC, that's silver silver chloride, the SJ, I don't have that listed. That stands for solid junction. Uh, they do have a liquid junction as well, but we're just showing you the solid junction on this. So just think of it as silver silver chloride. So on this particular chart at the top, we're more electropositive. We kind of said that already. Every other reference electro is more negative with respect to copper copper sulfate. So again, if we were to compare zinc way down here to copper copper sulfate, zinc is more negative than copper copper sulfate by 1116. And that's what we're showing you out to the side. So each one of these guys, uh, it's the same as the chart I showed you before. There's a difference. All of them are more negative than copper copper sulfate. You just have to figure out by looking at this chart by how much. The only other thing we've put in here is metal X, okay? And so I want you to think of that as carbon steel, for example. So carbon steel resides in here in the middle of these guys. So when you take a pipe to soil, you know you are no longer measuring two reference cells compared to each other. Instead, you're comparing a carbon steel pipe to some kind of reference. So sometimes we may take a pipe to soil out there, pipe, red lead, black lead would be our reference cell. Let's say that's a zinc. That's gonna give us a reading of voltage measurement on our meter. Well, when it does that, my boss may not understand things, so he may want me to convert to copper sulfate. So I need to know how to do that, okay? So whenever I'm talking pipe to soils, uh, I can tell you that the copper copper sulfate reference electrode, if that's what I'm using out there to take a pipe to soil, that will be the most negative reading I get in the field. All right, I'm gonna say that again. I'm taking a pipe to soil, visualize yourself out there, you're at a test station or a riser setting, and you've got your red lead on the pipe, and you've got your black lead on your stationary reference electrode, which is a copper copper sulfate, and you get a number. That number, I promise you, will be the most negative number you would get out of all these reference electrodes. Okay, so if copper sulfate is the most negative reading I'll get when I'm taking a pipe to soil, that means if I have to convert to anything else, I'm gonna go more electropositive, and I just have to figure out by how much. So for example, if I wanted to convert my copper copper sulfate reference electrode, the most negative reading I'll ever get if I wanted to convert it to zinc for some reason, I know it's gonna be more positive because so copper sulfate is the most negative. And so I just need to figure out by how much, which is 1116 millivolts. I tend to speak in millivolts nowadays. Uh, 1116 millivolts is the same as saying 1.116 uh, volts. So let's get over to some exercises. I'm gonna skip that for a second. <clears throat> That's supposed to be at the end. It's not over. So we got our handy dandy calculator up here. Highly recommend this TI-30XS. Uh, you can download this emulator. I believe Texas Instruments will give it to you for 90 days, maybe 60, I forget. Uh, but you can buy it pretty cheap. This uh, calculator is really handy uh, for those of you who are taking industry standard test. Take a little drink of water there. Um, and so uh, I would get used to this. You can also go buy it out there. Okay, so I've got a little spreadsheet I've created for you. Um, I've got CSE and column A, at silver silver chloride in B, standard calomel electrode in C, standard hydrogen electrode in D, and then I've got zinc reference electrode in column E. F is whether they're meeting criteria or not. We may not know that. So what we're gonna do, the most negative reading, I told y'all this earlier, if I'm taking a pipe to soil, I'm at that test station and I stick my reference cell on the ground, the most negative reading I'll ever, ever, ever get is with a copper sulfate electrode. If you can remember that, 
you're going positive. You just need to figure out how by how much if you have to convert. So I've got negative over here and I've got positive over here on E. All right. So as I go to the right, I'm getting more and more positive on my reading. And so what's happening here, we're going to take some of these out. Uh, so what's happening here, we're just going to go to line three here. So line three, I've got a zinc measurement pipe to soil, okay, carbon steel pipe, and I've got a negative 84, all right? I'm gonna jump all the way to copper sulfate. What do you think that reading is gonna be? Is it gonna be more negative or is it gonna be more positive? It's gonna be more negative because remember, copper sulfate's the most negative reading you'll ever get. Okay, so how much? Well, if you have that chart, if you've got my, my screen and you, you, you jotted that down or you screenshotted it, you've got that chart there. Let me pull it up. We know that ZRE is gonna be 1116 millivolts different. I've got that written at the top here. Everything I wrote is compared to CSE for convenience. So really, I know I'm going to go more negative than 84 millivolts by 1116. Okay, let's do that. So I'm a negative uh, 84, right? I'm starting there. That's my pipe to soil with zinc. And I'm going to subtract 1116 millivolts. And that's going to give me a negative 1200. So let's write that in. All right. Now, I like to start at CSE, and then I know as I go right, I'm gonna get more positive. And so negative 1200, if I go to silver, silver chloride, that's 60 millivolts difference. That's more positive, I know that for sure. And so I'm gonna add 60 millivolts, and that's gonna be 1140. 1140 millivolts would be that pipe to soil. If I needed to go to calomel, that's 72 millivolts difference. Which way? It's more positive than copper sulfate. Ah, so we're gonna start that as negative 1200. And I'm gonna add, because I'm going more positive, 72 millivolts, and that's gonna give me a negative 1128. All right, let's start over again. That same 1200. Once I get to CSE, it gets a little easy. Okay. I know I'm going more positive. I just have to figure out by how much. Okay. And so I'm going to go negative 1200 millivolts and I'm going to add 316 millivolts to that. And that's going to give me a negative 884. And then we started with zinc. So we're good to go. All right. So if we concentrate on line three or row three in this spreadsheet, if my criteria for effective cathodic protection is a negative 850 millivolts with respect to a copper copper sulfate reference electrode, did I meet criteria if I have negligible IR, IR error? Go see my criteria and pipe to soil potential video to learn more about that. So we're gonna assume we do not have IR error. So if I don't, did I meet criteria with this negative 1200? I sure did. So the answer is yes. All right, let's work through this next one. I've given you a lot of numbers. Okay, so this one's a little bit easier. I'm going to give you some of these so that you can copy this, you can work on your own, create a spreadsheet just like this and just kind of work through it. You can make up numbers and just kind of work through it and come back to my video and compare and make sure you're good. That way, if you're in the field converting, you're good to go. Or if you're in an industry test practicing, you won't get backwards when you go down there. So you can pass those things. All right, so we've got a zinc. I've taken a pipe to soil with zinc, 266 millivolts. That's positive. All right, so we're starting more positive. Now, if I want to go to copper sulfate, am I going to go negative or positive? Copper sulfate's the most negative reading you ever get. So I know I'm going negative. Perfect. So I'm going to subtract how much? 1116. When we do that, we get a negative 850. So I've got my whole row four. I've got it all filled out. Do I meet criteria? Negligible IR? 
yes i made a negative 850 with respect to a copper sulfate electrode so that means that i meet criteria life is good all right next one we got two to fill out here so i'm going to start with zinc again you can kind of see my my pattern here i'll start with zinc if i've got that uh, measurement and I can get to copper sulfate and I kind of backtrack from there so we're gonna start with a positive 274 that's a pipe to soil with zinc and so we had steel compared to zinc reference electrode not metals I'm sticking this thing in the ground keep that in mind okay and so I've got a positive number 274 millivolts I know I'm going more negative by how much 11 16 and so I'm gonna get a negative 842. All right, well with that negative 842, I still need to get this standard hydrogen electrode, okay? He's more positive than that, so I'm gonna add 316. And that's gonna give me negative 526. So concentrating on row five, do I meet criteria, assuming ne negligible IR? I don't meet a negative 850. I don't know what my polarization is because I don't have a native. So I have to answer no, no. Okay, this one we got a little less filled out. We're gonna start off with zinc again. That's a positive 116. And so I'm gonna go 116, I'm gonna subtract how much 11 16 and that's going to give me negative 1.000 volts or a thousand millivolts so negative thousand millivolts all right i'm going to work back from there i need calomel that's 72 more positive and so i'm going to add 72 that's going to get me to negative 928 I need hydrogen, all right? So back to that negative volt or 1,000 millivolts. I'm gonna add, going to the right, 316. That's gonna give me negative 684. So you can see the differences in all these things. So if somebody said, hey, here's a hydrogen measurement of 684, you're gonna have to do some math before you determine whether it is meeting criteria or not. And so that's what we're doing on this. That's, the, that's the, the purpose of this exercise. That's the purpose of knowing this information. And uh, so line six, are we meeting criteria? You bet we are, let's hit yes. Now we're gonna go to this last one here. Wonder if we're gonna meet criteria or not, let's see. I'm starting off with zinc, that's a 267. So my pipe to soil is a carbon steel pipe. With respect to a zinc reference electrode we're going to stick that thing in the earth we're going to take that pop to soil we don't have any hour error in this case and we're going to go more negative by 1116 to get to copper and that's going to be a negative 849 do we meet criteria there we don't and so there you go uh, this is just a handy dandy little spreadsheet i created again feel free to copy this or make something else your own get you a calculator. You do need to keep um, your positives and negatives. You gotta keep them straight. You gotta understand which way you're going. You can get flipped around in two seconds. Uh, so for me, it's worth repeating one more time on this video, the most negative reading you will get, the most negative pipe to soil you will get out there in the wild is with a copper sulfate reference electrode. It's the most negative reading you'll get. Everything else is gonna be more positive. You just have to figure out by how much. So I hope this helps you. I'm gonna get you back to my closeout screen here so you know how to contact me. Be sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends. We had a great, great practice. I'm always happy to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Hey, we'll see you next time.